Hello everyone, I'm Susumu Kiyoshima from NTT Research. I'll talk about my work about black box impossibilities of two rounds weak zero knowledge and strong WI. So the focus of this work is to prove a privacy of interact proof and argument. So in this work, we consider interact proof and argument that satisfy not only completeness and soundness, but also some kind of security against cheating verifier. So the most important proof of privacy notion in cryptography is of course zero knowledge, which guarantees that for any malicious verifier, there exists a simulator such that the view that is computed by the simulator is indistinguishable from the view of the verifier who interact with the prover in a real interaction. So a good point about zero knowledge is that uh, it guarantees really strong security. And because of this powerful security, zero knowledge has been used in a huge number of applications in cryptography. However, a problem about zero knowledge is that uh, it is too strong to achieve in two rounds. So in particular, it is known that the two rounds zero knowledge proof and argument cannot exist for any non to be languages and this impossibility hold even when we consider non-black zero knowledge. So to, to avoid this impossibility, uh, previous works have considered uh, several weak proof of privacy notions uh, that are weak enough to avoid the impossibility, but strong enough to be used in many applications. So the most well-known example of such a weak proof of privacy notion is uh, witness indistinguishability. Uh, which guarantees that uh, for any statement and any two witnesses, uh, the proof generated with the first witness is in distinction from the proof generated with the second witness. So WI is indeed uh, much weaker than zero knowledge. Uh, for example, it does not guarantee any security when we consider a language with a unique witness, but still WI is known to be useful as a building block. And in addition, it is known that the WI can be achieved in two rounds under standard assumptions. And other than WI, there are several more examples of weak proof of privacy notions. And basically, all of them are stronger than WI, but weaker than zero knowledge. And in this work, we focus on two of them, uh, strong WI and uh, weak zero knowledge. So first, what is uh, weak zero knowledge? Uh, roughly speaking, weak zero knowledge is obtained by switching the order of quantifier in the definition of zero knowledge. So recall that uh, the standard zero knowledge requires that uh, for any verifier there exists a simulator such that uh, for any distinguisher the real and the simulation are in distinction. So in contrast, uh, weak zero knowledge only requires that for any verifier and any distinguisher, where there exists a simulator such that the real and the simulation are indistinguishable. So the difference from standard zero knowledge is that now the simulator is allowed to depend on the distinguisher. So in applications, weak zero knowledge is useful when, for example, it is used as a building block of some large protocol having some indistinguishable security definitions. And this is because uh, such, in such applications, uh, typically we only need to show that uh, the output of a certain intermediate hybrid doesn't change when we switch uh, real zero knowledge execution to simulation. And so uh, by considering such a hybrid as a distinguisher, uh, we can replace the standard zero knowledge with a uh, weak zero knowledge. And next, uh, what is strong WI? Uh, roughly speaking, a strong WI guarantees that the uh, proof about two indistinguishable statements are also indistinguishable. So specifically, it guarantees that for any two distribution over statement between a pair, uh, if a statement if statement chosen from these two distribution are indistinguishable, then a proof generated for this statement are also indistinguishable. So a key difference from a standard WI is that the strong WI is meaningful even when we cross the unique witness relation. And so a WI can be, strong WI can be used, for example, to prove a statement about the statistically binding commitment. So in previous works, it has been shown that uh, we can obtain two round construction for both uh, weak zero knowledge and strong WI 
and in particular to run constraints shall be obtained both in the derivative setting and the standard uh, non-derivative setting. Where in the standard setting, the statement is fixed at the beginning of the protocol, whereas in the derivative setting, the statement is chosen by the prover in the last round of the protocol. And what is important about these two settings is that uh, the derivative setting is not strictly stronger than the standard non-derivative setting. And this is because uh, also the derivative setting considers soundness against stronger cheating prover uh, who chooses the statement to prove in the last round adaptively. Uh, it consider prove a privacy against the weaker cheating verifier uh, who need to choose a first round message without knowing the statement. So uh, when we cross the result in these two settings, uh, we need to consider them separately. And also uh, this uh, ex existing positive result about two round construction are really great. A weak point about them is that uh, all of them are based on super formula hard assumption, uh, such as assumption against the uh, sub experience time adversary. And this is in contrast to the case of the standard WI, because uh, for standard WI, we have, we have protocol with two rounds under polynomial hard assumptions, such as uh, turbo permutations. So uh, in this work, uh, we study if the use of uh, super polynomial hardness is necessary for two round weak zero knowledge and uh, strong WI. Now, uh, let me explain our result. So at a high level, we showed that uh, it is impossible to obtain two round weak zero knowledge and strong WI using uh, standard techniques and uh, standard uh, polynomial hard assumptions. So to explain this result more formally, we first need to formalize what the standard techniques and the standard assumption mean. And in this work, uh, we, we formalize them by using the notion of black box deduction and the falsify assumptions respectively. So what is a falsify assumption? So roughly speaking, uh, assumption, an assumption is called falsifiable if it is modeled as an interactive game between a polynomial time challenger and a polynomial time adversary. So you can easily check that essentially any assumption that is considered standard in cryptography is indeed falsifiable. And example include the one-way function, collision rigid hash function, and the RSA, TDH, and the LW assumptions. So next, what is a block of reduction? So first consider the case of soundness and consider the setting where we are trying to prove the soundness of some interactive argument based on some assumption. Then a graph of reduction for soundness is a polynomial time oracle machine, such that for any cheating prover that breaks the soundness of the protocol, uh, the reduction can break the underlying assumption by using the cheating prover as an oracle. So essentially, the reduction is black box in the sense that uh, it uses the cheating prover as a black box. And of course, black hole reduction can be defined for other security notions as well. And in particular, black hole reduction for strong WI can be defined similarly. And I know that the black hole reduction are used very widely in cryptography. And actually, almost all security proof in cryptography use black hole reduction implicitly. Now I'm ready to explain our result. Um, and let me start from the case of uh, weak zero knowledge. First, I know that uh, the impossibility of a three round black box zero knowledge also hold for weak zero knowledge in the standard setting. So we already have a black box impossibility for two round weak zero knowledge in the standard uh, non deleted non setting. And in this work, we give a black box impossibility in the deleted setting. And in particular, we show that the two round weak zero knowledge is impossible if soundness is approved by black hole reduction based on false assumption. And I know that uh, this result holds even when non black hole techniques are used in the proof of weak zero knowledge. And next, let me explain our result about strong WI. So first, uh, we consider the standard setting, and we show that the two-round strong WI in the standard non derivative setting is impossible if strong WI is proved by black hole reduction based on false assumption. And this result holds even when non black hole reduction are used in the proof of soundness. 
Next, uh, we consider the delay dip setting, and we show that the two long strong double I in the delay dip setting is possible if either strong double I is proved by proper reduction based on forage assumption, and we consider protocols that have public verifiability, or uh, both soundness and strong double I is proved by proper reduction based on forage assumption. So uh, in this work, we show in possibility for the case that uh, strong double I is proved by proper reduction. But I need to note that uh, this result actually requires that the black box reduction for strong double I are black box in a strong sense. And in particular, we, we require that they satisfy property called oblivious, obliviousness, uh, which is defined as follows. So recur that the uh, instant WI, we compare two proofs where the statement that we a sample from two different distribution. So when we consider malicious verify against strong WI, we also need to specify from which distribution the statement witnessed the sample. And then roughly speaking, a black box reduction is called oblivious if it is a black box, not only about the verifier, but also about the distribution. So in particular, we require that uh, for any two distribution of both statement witness and for any verifier against strong WI, if the verifier uh, breaks the strong WI uh, with respect to these, these two distribution, then uh, the reduction breaks under any assumption or uh, it distincts the distribution or the statement. So uh, the only additional restriction that we impose here is that the single reduction work for all distribution. And this restriction is actually pretty natural. And in particular, all the reduction that we know for strong WI uh, satisfy this restriction because uh, we currently don't know any techniques that use non block access to the distribution in non trivial way. So even, even with this restriction, this, this restriction uh, we believe that our impossibility results are still meaningful. OK, so these are our results. So next, let me explain what our results imply. First, uh, the bad news is that uh, to obtain two-round protocol under polynomial hard assumption, uh, number of techniques are necessary for both the case of weak zero knowledge and the, the case of a strong WI. And uh, in the in both uh, derivative input setting and the standard, standard uh, non-derivative non input setting. Next, uh, good news is that uh, two round weak zero knowledge and strong WI and the polynomial had assumption are still not ruled out. And this is because uh, it might be possible to avoid our impossibility by using number of acts, number of techniques. So in particular, the positive result by Vitansky, Kuran, and Panis uses a number of, uh, number of techniques for proof of privacy in the standard setting. And even though currently the techniques are based on superpolyne hardness, uh, we do not know whether the use of superpolyne hardness in such a setting is essential. So it might be possible to obtain positive results in such a setting by improving the techniques. All right. So in the rest of this talk, uh, I'll explain our techniques. And let me first explain the techniques for the, for the result of weak zero knowledge, and then explain the technique for the result of a strong double I. So for, we, for weak zero knowledge, uh, we obtain our impossibility in two steps. So in the first step, we use a result by Chung, Rui, and the Perth to observe that the weak zero knowledge imply another weak form of zero knowledge called the uh, tape strong zero knowledge. So the precise definition of tape strong zero knowledge is not important for this talk. And what is important is that the tape strong zero knowledge is defined with the same of our quantifiers as the standard zero knowledge. Namely, it is defined in the form of uh, for any verifier, they exist a simulator such as only for any distinguisher, blah, blah, blah. Then uh, in the second step, we observe that uh, since uh, tape strong zero knowledge is defined with the same of our quantifiers as the zero knowledge, uh, we can obtain a black box impossibility of two round delayed input uh, tips from zero knowledge relatively easily uh, by using techniques using the in previous black box impossibility of other two round protocol, such as uh, two round SPS zero knowledge or SNARK. 
So uh, actually, the proof of this result does not use many new techniques. Uh, essentially, the main point is that it is already known that uh, the order of quantifier in the definition of weak zero knowledge can be switched back to the normal order. So in this work, I won't explain the techniques of this result in more detail. And rather, in the rest of this talk, I will focus on explaining our technique for proving the proxy possibility of a two random storm double I. So first, uh, for simplicity, let us consider the, uh, the case of a non-interactive strong, strong double I. So for non-interactive strong double I, uh, the formal statement that we prove is the following. So assume the existence of CCSK public key encryption, then there exists an MP language L that satisfies the following. If a strong WI of a no interactive argument for L is proved by using a block of US proper reduction based on foolish assumption, then uh, such assumption must be false. So in other words, we show that uh, unless we use false assumption, uh, we cannot obtain no interactive strong WI using proper reduction under foolish assumption. And now uh, to prove this statement, uh, we use a well-known meta reduction technique. So recall that our goal is to show that if there exists a black hole reduction for non-structural strong WI, then the underlying assumption must be false. So uh, to was showing this, we show that the, any such black hole reduction can be used to efficiently break the assumption, uh, which implies that the assumption is false as desired. So let me explain this approach in a little more detail. And first, it recall that the obvious proper reduction for strong WI guarantees that uh, for any two distribution of a statement witness and for any verifier against strong WI, if the verifier successfully breaks strong WI, then either the reduction breaks the underlying assumption or it distinguishes the two distribution of a statement. Then, uh, in the first step of a proof, we design a specific language distribution over statement witness and the verifier against all the boys, such that the, even though this particular verifier successfully breaks on the boy, uh, the reduction cannot distring, distinguish the distribution of a statement uh, when it is given access to this particular verifier. So once we show this, it follows from the property of the proper reduction that the, when the reduction is given access to this particular periphery, uh, it, must break, uh, it must break the underlying assumption since it cannot distinguish the distribution of a statement. Then uh, in the second step of a proof, we show that the, the reduction and the verifier that we have designed can actually be executed in polynomial time. And this means that we can break the underlying assumption in polynomial time. So we can conclude that the assumption must be false as desired. So now let me explain each step in more detail and let me start from the first step. So recall that in this step, our goal is to design a language distribution and the verifier such that the verifier can successfully break on the Y but uh, the reduction cannot distinguish the distribution of a statement. So uh, we consider the setting where the reduction is given a success as a statement from the challenger, and it tried to guess uh, from which distribution the statement is sampled, and the, the reduction is given access to, access to a verifier here, uh, as an oracle. And the first, as a warm-up, uh, let us consider a simple case where after receiving a statement from the challenger, uh, the reduction simply forward the, forward the statement to the verifier along with some proof that it created by itself. Now, uh, the first observation is that uh, without the loss of the generality, we can assume that the reduction uh, the verifier abort if the reduction send a proof that it's not accepting. And this is because a cheating verifier against the bar is supposed to interact with the honest prover, uh, which always give up a proof. So a verifier can, um, the verifier can break on the bar even when it abort when by receiving a proof that it's not accepting. So uh, this observation implies that uh, for the deduction, 
the access to the verifier is useless unless it sends the accent proof to the verifier. Now, uh, the, key, the key point is that the, if the reduction can indeed generate accent proof for the statement is that it is saved from challenger, then it can be used to break the soundness. And this is because if we consider language such that the true and the false statement are indistinguishable, then it follows that uh, even when we give a false statement to the reduction, uh, the reduction still send the accepted proof to the verifier, and this clearly contradicts soundness. So uh, in, the, in the simple case where the reduction simply falls a statement from the challenger to the verifier, uh, we can show that uh, the access to the verifier is useless. However, uh, the reduction does not necessarily always simply forward the statement to the verifier. And in general, it can send any, any statement to the verifier. And uh, this statement might be uh, somehow correlated with the statement that the, the reduction receives from a challenge. And to handle this case, we design language and distribution that have some kind of non-variability uh, by using a CCSK encryption. So specifically, uh, we consider language L that, that consists of a public key, public key ciphertext pair over CCSK PKE such that uh, either zero or one is encrypted in the ciphertext. And also for each public key PK and the binary value B, uh, we consider distribution XPKB uh, that output the random encryption B and the public key PK. And I know that it is easy to see that the, the, the distribution XP, XPKB is a distribution of a true statement of the language L. Now, uh, given these language and distributions, uh, the question we consider is that uh, for random public key PK, whether the reduction, uh, given any success cheating verifier about these two distribution, uh, can, distinguish, can distinguish the distribution XPK0 and XPK1. And uh, the answer to this question is no. And this is because uh, we can design a specific cheating verifier that breaks down the by by using the decryption oracle of the CCSK PK. So indeed, for, for, the, for this particular language and distribution that we have designed, uh, a verifier against on the bar is required to distinguish a proof generated for encryption zero and the proof generated for encryption one. And by emulating the decryption oracle, the verifier can easily, dis can easily distinguish these two cases by just querying the statement to the decryption oracle. Then, uh, since this means that uh, the making query to this particular cheating verifier is essentially equivalent to making query to the decryption oracle, uh, the security of the CCSK PKE directly guarantees that the access to this particular cheating verifier is useless to distinguish the distribution XPK0 and XPK1 as desired. So now let's go to step two. And from step one, we know that uh, for random public KPK, we have a success cheating verifier about the uh, distribution DPK0 and DPK1 such that uh, the reduction given the verifier uh, must, break the, must, must break the assumption rather than distinguish the distribution of a statement. And now the key observation is that uh, for any public key PK, the verifier that we have designed can be executed in polynomial time by using a corresponding secret key, SK. And this is because the verifier that we have designed just uses a decryption oracle. So uh, we can conclude that uh, we can efficiently break the assumption by using a reduction on our verifier. And so we can conclude that uh, the assumption must be false as desired. And uh, this is a proof for the case of uh, no interactive strong Y. Now from now, from now on, uh, I will briefly explain how we can extend our technique from uh, no interactive strong Y to two round strong Y. And uh, let me first explain the case of the standard uh, non deleted put setting. So it turned out that uh, the only problem we have in this setting is that uh, in the case of two rounds from the Y, the reduction might rewind the verifier. 
And in particular, the reduction might request a verifier to use the randomness for, for different statement. So fortunately, in the standard uh, non deletive setting, uh, this problem can be solved very easily. And the key point is that uh, in this setting, the statement is declared before the first behavior message. And so if, because the verifier that computed its randomness by prime PRF on the statement, uh, we can effectively prevent the use of randomness for different statements. So with this uh, modification, we can prove the impossibility of two round strong double in the standard setting, just like uh, no interactive strong double. And next, uh, let us let me uh, con let, let's consider the two round strong double in the deleted setting. So the problem is the same as before, namely the problem is that the, the reduction might request a verifier to use randomness for different statements. And since in the delayed, in the delayed input setting, the statement is chosen after the verifier message, uh, we cannot solve this problem by using PLF anymore. And in this setting, uh, we use a slightly different approach from the case of non-interactive non WI, strong non-interactive strong WI. And in particular, we show that the strong WI imply a weak form of weak zero knowledge. And then we use our impossibility of weak zero knowledge. So the detail of this approach is a bit involved, so I won't explain the detail in this talk. So if you are interested, uh, the detail can be found in the paper. Finally, let me give a conclusion. So in this work, we give a black, black box impossibility about obtaining two round weeks of knowledge and storm the boy from a polynomial hard assumption. So our takeaway message is that in order to obtain two round weak zero knowledge and strong deploy from polymer hardness, uh, you have to use non-block techniques, at least uh, either for soundness or prove a privacy. So this concluded my talk. Uh, so, so thank you for listening.